All right. Um, hello, everybody. This is Carl's, your friendly neighborhood violin teacher. Um, today, we are going to continue our work with maintaining your violin. Um, before we move forward, I wanted to review very quickly from last time the three things that you need to do before you practice and after you practice. So, again, the first thing, number one, clean your strings. Number two, tighten your bow. Number three, put on your shoulder rest, and then, you know, you do whatever, practicing, blah, 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 blah. And then when you're all done, clean your strings, loosen your bow, take off your shoulder rest. And of course, when I say shoulder rest, I really mean shoulder rest or your sponge, whichever, whichever um, piece of equipment you're using. So, um, moving forward, we're going to talk about what belongs in your case. So, once again, courtesy of my daughter, we're going to be using this violin. So, there are some obvious things, of course, that belong in your case. So obviously the violin itself and the bow. And in this case, so for my daughter, we use just this pad, this is my daughter's shoulder rest because <laughs> she's so tiny. Um, so pretty much then your violin, your bow, your shoulder rest. Now, a few other things actually belong in there as well. Um, I am doing it right now, which is rosin. So this is, a, we'll call it a cake of rosin. By the way, so a couple things though. This looks kind of pretty and shiny, and it is called a cake of rosin. Do not eat it. <laughs> it is not food. Don't do something stupid like put this in your mouth. It is basically tree sap that's been chemically treated in order to basically do a very specific job. So do not eat it. I'm not joking. Like, it's not even funny. Don't eat it. Don't lick it. It is not food. It will poison you. So think of it like a Think of, of when someone says a cake of rosin, think of cake of rosin like a urinal cake. <laughs> um, or like a cake of uranium, uh, of like, what is it called? Processed uranium. Um, yellow cake, that's what they call it. Yeah, yellow cake uranium. It's not food. It is not food. Anyway, rosin. Put that there for a minute. And... You all should have a snark tuner. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm going to show you in just a minute here. I thought about doing one of those sort of like AMSR, ASMR unboxing videos, but no one wants that. <laughs> no one wants to hear that in my voice. <laughs> anyway, so this is a snark tuner. And you don't really need the box. I, I would say keep the box for a couple weeks just, to be, just in case you need to return it, but you probably won't. And then it comes in, you know, a little bag. It's a pretty cheap bag. So once you sh once you know you don't have to return the the tuner, I would throw the bag away too because honestly, it doesn't really do much. It's already see, it's already torn. Like seriously. So this is the actual tuner right here. Um, so you again, you will need this. Now, you may have noticed here that not all this stuff actually fits. Like if I try to close the case, see the the pad is already taking up all the space in this little pocket. And if I try to put the rosin here, which is a bad idea, then whenever the case moves around, this rosin is gonna go everywhere. So that won't work. And of course, this thing is too big. Oh, and we're missing something. Um, we are missing a cleaning cloth, which again, I will show you how to make. I said last time, I think at the end of this video, we're gonna show you how to make it. But anyway, a cleaning cloth is just basically this. It's just um, parts of an old t-shirt. It's like old cotton t-shirt that you cut into a square and that's what you clean with. So, if you don't have room in your case to put all this stuff, then use your friendly neighborhood tote bag. So, right, this is just a tote bag. So what I suggest is if you don't have if you have a tote bag that's white, use a white tote bag because it's, then it's easier to see what's inside it. So, the snark 
and the rosin don't fit. And the cleaning cloth doesn't really fit either. So what you do is you put them into your tote bag. <clears throat> and then everything, you slide everything together. So all of your stuff, all of your violin stuff should be in your case if it all fits, which probably won't happen. Or should be in your case as well as a um, as a tote bag. So I'll summarize the things you need to make sure you have. Obviously a case with a violin, a bow, and a pad. Now a pad, oops, I'm supposed to summarize aren't I? So let's do it that way. <laughs> so it should be a violin, a, a violin, a bow, a shoulder rest or a sponge or a pad, and a snark tuner, snark tuner and rosin and a cleaning cloth so those are the things you should have now and actually you can take a screenshot of this if you're not sure what all goes now this stuff sh you should try to fit this in your case but if you can't then don't force it if your case won't close all the way I don't mean buckle I mean if you just if the lid just won't close all the way then don't worry take the stuff out put it in a tote bag, um, and you'll be fine. The idea is to always know where your stuff is supposed to be. So that's where we are for what goes in your case and or a violin tote bag. Hmm, let's see here. So um, I think the next thing would be, let's talk about how we make a cleaning cloth. is a t-shirt. So what you do is actually pretty straightforward. Um, you take an old cotton t-shirt. It needs to be cotton. This is actually, this is actually a surprisingly nice t-shirt. This t-shirt is 20 years old and it's like faded, but the cotton is actually still super soft. I got kind of lucky. Anyway, and it's thinned out a little bit too, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a Jersey cotton. You can get you can get this stuff. I mean, even under quarantine, you can get it from like Joanne's Fabric. It's just Jersey cotton. It's just T-shirt cotton, and this is really good stuff. It, um, there is other stuff like some people people have suggested flannel. Don't use flannel. <laughs> don't use flannel. Some people have suggested felt. Don't use felt. And if you don't know what flannel or felt, um, if you don't know what those fabrics are, then don't worry. <laughs> um, Jersey cotton, T-shirt cotton is the best stuff to use. So what you do is you take a ruler. This is actually not a ruler, this is called a scale, um, but whatever. Um, and then you take a marker, and then of course you can't write anything with the marker. You have to take the you know, thing off. There we go, now we're in business. And you just sort of draw a line, kind of casually along that way. And then, you kind of draw a line casually this way too. Ah, uh, yes, geometry. And you draw, you mark off about a foot in each direction. Let me show you guys can still see this here. So you see, I roughly have a foot marked off. And this is best with fabric scissors, but if you don't have fabric scissors, that's okay. Then you just take your trusty scissors and you just cut. And again, as I mentioned before, we're not building a space shuttle. So this, this does not need to be super accurate. It would be great if you have something that sort of looks like a square, which we're gonna see, we're gonna, this is gonna be an adventure to see if we actually did that.
Don't worry, there's still audio. I'm just, you know, cutting up a t-shirt. Okay. So, what we should have here, let's, for the final dramatic reveal, is garbage. But still, it'll work. It is definitely not a square, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then you cut this in half. And I know it's not pretty, sorry about that, but it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to do the job. And the job, of course, is to make sure your violin stays clean. So the reason why I cut it in half is because people always lose, invariably you lose one. So cut, you know, cut it in half and keep this half, I don't know, keep it in like a junk drawer or like your tool drawer or something like that, you know, and then keep this half with your, uh, with your violin. So that's how that works. Um, again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be clean. It has to be Jersey cotton. That'll do the job. Let's see here. Um, let's talk about inspecting your violin now. Um, so there isn't a whole lot to do here with inspecting your violin. Let's... So again, in this case, there are sort of two things you should check pretty often when you... Actually, there are really three. Um, there are actually three things you should check when you are uh, getting ready to play your violin. So one is... Number one is to check the bridge, the fine tuners, and the jaw rest. And I'll be very specific about that. You can actually see here um, that the bridge is actually leaning forward. It's really kind of hard to tell, but the bridge is actually leaning forward a little bit. So in order, so we don't want that. Anyway, you want to check if the bridge is leaning forward on your instrument too much. On my daughter's violin here, it is a tiny, tiny bit, but it's not enough to be scary. So I'm not worried about that. Um, but if your bridge is like, you know, instead of here, it's like this, that's a problem. Or if it's like at the top, all curved, anyway, stuff like that. That's something you should probably let me know about. And we need to see if it's doable as, uh, as an instrument or if it's, um, if it's uh, something that really needs to be taken to the violin shop. Do not try, if you notice your if you notice your bridge seems super weird or super warped or something like that, do not try to fix it yourself. Do not try to fix it yourself. I promise you, it will make life way worse. Um, just the same thing, right? Like if you break your arm, you don't, you usually aren't the one to set your own bone and make up a cast, right? You go to a doctor for that kind of thing. If your violin is damaged, tell someone who knows what they're doing. Um, so there's that, that's a little strange. So anyway, that's the bridge. Number one is the bridge. Number two, oops, I said, are the fine tuners. Now, fine tuners are a little harder to tell. So these things up here are the fine tuners. And we call them fine tuners because you use them to make small adjustments for the intuneness, <laughs> the intonation of your strings. Um, there's actually a word for tuning. Oh, I guess the tuning. There's actually a word for that in Italian, but there isn't in English. Um, so I, it's funny, I never actually had to say that word out loud, that's really funny. Anyway, so these are to make fine adjustments to how in tune your strings are. But if you notice, fine tuners are just screws. Like, I can just, this is like the G string, I can just turn the screw a lot until I actually unscrew it. You can see it here. This is just, I just unscrewed this guy. Um, so, because of that, sometimes you can screw them in so far that they start to scratch the bottom of, the, they start to scratch the top of the violin. So, oh, this guy's not coming. Let's see, we have to put this guy back. Let's illustrate the point. There we go. So anyway, so we have to screw this thing back in. So if we um that adjustment there, you can tell that if you actually screw this, if we screw this in too far, 
You notice here that the bottom of the tuner is getting right there. The bottom of the tuner it gets pushed down the more I turn the tuner. And actually, if you look very closely here, you can see that the bottom of the tuner, right there, the bottom of the tuner is actually almost touching the top of the violin. And of course, if the bottom of the tuner touches the top of the violin, and you're playing it, right, the violin, the strings and the tailpiece, these vibrate, so they're, they're buzzing, they're vibrating while you're, while, while you're playing. That's how violins make sound. And when the bottom of the tuner is just sitting on top of the violin, then all that buzzing basically turns it into a drill, and it just drills into the top of the violin. So you actually can seriously damage the top of your violin just from these tuners being too far down. Now you notice here, actually, there's actually quite a bit of space. That's good to see but you still want to check that. And of course, on a tiny violin like this, on this particular violin, it's not much of a worry, but it can be a concern on other instruments. So check your bridge to be sure that it's not warped and not falling over. Check your fine tuners to be sure that they're not drilling into the top of the violin. And the third thing is super easy. You're gonna check your jaw rest, your chin rest. Some teachers call this a chin rest. Some teachers call it a jaw rest. Um, I call it a jaw rest because really honestly that's what <laughs> your jaw is really what's sitting in here your chin isn't really what's sitting in here but um, to be honest most teachers by far most teachers call it a chin rest um, so I'm still gonna call it a jaw rest because I think it's a better name so anyway so the jaw rest all you have to do is just make sure that it's not loose so you just sort of squeeze on it a little bit you just take your thumb and kind of squeeze and if it jiggles that means it's loose so that shouldn't happen, but you want to know about that. So if it's loose, let me know. So again, check the bridge, check fine tuners, and check that this guy here is not, the jaw rest is not um, jiggly, not loose. Okay, so what do you do, of course, if you discover that your bridge is warped or broken or otherwise about to fall over or if your fine tuners are drilling into the bottom of the top of the, of the, of the violin or if your jaw rest is wiggly um, just send me an email the idea the best thing would be to send me an email telling me what's wrong and include in that email like a picture of the problem the best photograph you can of the problem stuck in that email um, and then I can take a look at it and I can either tell you, hey, bring it to me and I'll get it taken care of, or um, this is not something I can fix and you have to take it to the violin shop. Um, but do not try to fix any of it yourself. I don't care what you think. I don't care if your mother or your father is concertmaster of the New York Philharmonic or the Santa Fe Opera. I do not care. <laughs> do not try to repair it yourself. Um, it just, it's not worth the risk. And we all are busy, we all have things to do. You know, go play with your friends, go text, go, oh, wait, we can't, no, no, do not go play with your friends either. We're under quarantine, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we can't do that. I'm saying is like, I don't know, text your friends, have a sandwich, you know, go tease your brother or sister, but don't try to repair these kinds of damages on your own. You'll make it worse. All right, so a quick summary so far of where we are. We, um, open today by reviewing the three things you need to do to get ready to, to practice and then to pack up when you're done practicing and those are clean the strings tighten and loosen the bow and put on and take off your shoulder rest or your sponge or your pad the next thing we talked about was what should go in your case and in your case of course a violin a bow your shoulder rest your pad or your sponge rosin, a tuner, and a cleaning cloth. We talked about how to make a cleaning cloth, and we talked about how to inspect your violin, those three things, how to, how to look, check your bridge, how to check your fine tuners, and how to check your jaw rest, and what to do if you notice any problems, and what to not do, which is do not try to fix anything on your own. I think that's probably enough for today. Um, thanks a lot, and uh, stay safe, and we'll be in touch. Uh, I'm starting to ramble. Yeah, good night.